Welcome back. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney, and today we are going to talk about making a bowl cozy. Yep, you had to almost live under a rock if you haven't heard about these. I have to admit, we rarely, well, we haven't used one before, but everybody's telling me how great they are to have, and kids love them, and so do people that like, like ice cream. These bowls are supposed to work great in the microwave so that you can pick up your bowl in the microwave instead of trying to get a pot holder under there and slosh around. Also, those that like ice cream, they like it too to keep their hands nice and cozy. So I am going to show you a really easy way to make these with a couple variations. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Wendy J. Haney, and I'm here to help you learn that quilting does not need to be intimidating. And the joy of quilting is something that I want to share with all of you because it is priceless to be able to make wonderful things, whether it is a bowl cozy, a quilt, or anything else that you make with needle and thread to be able to give as gifts to people that you care about. Let's get started. Okay, this bowl cozy that I made is a 10 inch one. It's made with a 10 inch piece of fabric and it fits our one of our standard bowls perfectly, as you can see here. But we have another set of bowls that are a tad larger. Hmm, hmm, doesn't fit quite so well. So in that case, I would want to bump up my bowl cozy to be a 12 inch. And you know what? It doesn't matter what size you choose to make. Eight, 10, 12, figure out a size you want that works for the bowls that you have. Because I'm guessing if you've got kids in the house, hmm, you maybe have some littler bowls or you do baking and maybe you have littler things that you would like to do these for, make them smaller, make them bigger. It all works. Same concept. Okay. What we need to start with is, and you're going to find lots of different ways to do this. I went out and watched a variety of videos as well to see if I could pick up any tidbits of information that maybe I hadn't thought of before. This is what I've come up with is one of the simplest and easiest ways to do this. I start with two pieces of batting. Here's the important thing about everything involved with making a bowl cozy that you plan on using in the microwave. Hey, if you just want to use it to keep your hands warm when you're eating ice cream, ah, no big deal. But if you're even considering putting it in the microwave, you got to use all cotton fabric and batting and thread. Cotton thread, good cotton fabric from your quilt store and cotton batting. Here's the tricky part though. Cotton batting is not all the same. You can go in a quilt store and go, hey, I need some cotton batting and they're going to cut you it. Well, guess what? There, if you really, really do your homework, some batting has scrim in it, which are little particles of things. Well, those little particles and beads can start on a fire in your microwave if you're not careful. So the safest thing to do is actually go with wrap and zap batting. It, it is intended to be used in the microwave. So you don't have to worry about it at all. It is from Pellon and you can buy it in a package like this, this 45 inches by a yard. So it'll give you, I'm guessing, more bowl cozies than you probably need in your house. And it's used for microwavable products, insulated potato bags, casserole warmers, and more. So that's another video for another time, a potato bag. This is what I use because if I'm giving these as a gift to somebody, the last thing I want to have happen is somebody come back, oh my God, it started a fire in the microwave. Not a good thing, not a good thing. So make sure you use wrap and zap so you're completely safe when it comes to that. So I am doing a 10 inch bowl. So in that regards, I've started with two 10 and a half inch pieces of batting, the wrap and zap, and two 10 and a half inch pieces of fabric. As you can see, they're slightly different color in nature, so you can choose a color for your top, the inside of the bowl, and one on the bottom, as I did with this one. I've got red plaid in the middle and black plaid on the back. Now, with that said, hey, if you want an all coffee fabric, both inside and outside, go for it. It doesn't matter. I'm doing this just so that I can show you kind of where we're working with the top and back. Okay, 
I'm going with a half inch larger than I need because essentially we're going to quilt these potentially depending on how you want to do it or stitch them and when you quilt you it is going to shrink up all of a sudden you're you're putting all these stitches in and and the fabric is going to shrink up just a tad so if we start with 10 and a half inch do our quilting stitching on it then we trim it to our 10 inch and we're golden okay so let's start with my I don't know whether it's going to be my inside or my outside. We're going to start with this. And because you're a little bit bigger size than you need, eh, you don't need to be too worried about it. I'm going to just pin them together a little bit so I keep them together as I do things. And actually, before I do that, the simplest way to make these and not get too much with quilting is to basically stitch them on the diagonal both sides so we can just take our ruler and actually this is a heck of a lot easier to do if you don't have your batting on there yet so let's do that this is the simplest easy peasy way to do this let's see I have this Pilot Friction. It's red and it will come off when I iron. Okay. So basically, what we're doing is this is sewing our top and bottoms to the batting. Oops. <laughs> A red pen on this bright orange is not going to show so we're going to switch to our black pen the joys of having multiple tools so we got that so what we're going to do is whoops getting in the way of equipment here there we go there we go okay now as i started to show we're going to just put our fabric on top of the batting and some people like to use a little um, spray adhesive to do this personally i don't like spray adhesive um yeah they always say it's not supposed to gum up your needles blah 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 and maybe it doesn't but you know what for me it has a tendency to get where it's not supposed to be and then I put my finger in it and then I get my fingers sticky and I just I don't like it so I'm a big one for pins or I've recently discovered this no sew fabric glue so what I could have done is just put a little bit of that on the sides but you know what this is not that big of a deal we don't need to get too wrapped up in that so I'm going to just pin this so I'm going to just show you on one of these Basically, you're going to do that with your top and your bottom, and then you're going to take them over to the sewing machine, which I'm going to go now. The thing is, when you're working with a top and a bottom, in this case, the, the batting, the wrap and zap, is fairly heavy. You probably, if you do not have a walking foot, here's a walking foot, which generally you would use when you're dealing with multiple layers of fabric and batting. It works really well because it keeps things moving in the same way. If you don't have one of these, no worries. You just use a regular foot and then you just, but if you have a walking foot, you may find that this works a lot better. And I'm actually going to go and use my walking foot. I'm working with a, a newer higher end machine because it's the simplest to get a camera next to it and it has an automated walking foot but it doesn't matter you're going to see me use it but it's the same concept with this and then we're going to stitch stitch the lines on everything so let's go do that okay here we are over on our at our sewing machine and as you can tell i have my walking foot on like I said, I have a little bit higher end machine and so it's actually electronic. So it has this feed that's gonna help moving it forward. 
Yours won't be, but that's okay. It'll work very similar. I also happen to have a stitch in the ditch foot on it. Therefore, I'm going to be able to just take that little foot there, I don't know if you can see it there, and right there and just put it on my line and it's going to walk. It's going to be right fine. Now, if I didn't have that foot on there and had my regular foot on there, hey, that's going to work the same way because all I need to do is keep that line in the middle of my foot. It's, you know what? Let's... It's this easy to drop that. So let's, let's do that. Let's do that. We're going to put in the regular foot. There we go. We're all clamped in. Okay, so we got our regular foot on this, which is much more likely to be what you're going to have. And, oh, let me grab a piece of fabric to use for my leader. We're going to just get started on that. Okay, now put it down. Now, in this case, I'm not sewing a seam. I am, I mean, I'm not sewing a seam. I'm actually like quilting. So in this case, I want to increase my seam length from normally I run when I'm sewing a seam at a two and a half inch stitch length. I'm going to bump it up to three or maybe three and a half. There we go. I'm at three and a half because that way, as you wash this, it's not going to pucker as much because you don't have a really tight seam. Okay, let's get going. And then as I get that closer, there we go. Now, at the end, you don't need to worry about backstitching because you know what? You're going to end up cutting it off anyway um, once we trim this down. And I'm going to just go right into my other block with chain piecing. As you'll note, <laughs> I'm using blue thread. Normally, I would not do this, but I wanted you to be able to see the stitches as I show you how to do this. I am going to finish this up and then we're gonna go and we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, we're back. I have my two, my front and my back quilted. This is something I wasn't very specific about when I told you this, but you would have seen it. You're putting the batting on the back and your fabric is right side up. So fabric right side up, batting beneath it. Okay, so we're clear on that. And as you can see, I have my quilted X's to hold the batting to the pieces of fabric. Okay, now is the time that we're going to want to square this up. So I have this nice Omni Grid 12 and a half inch ruler. So in this case, I want to match up my diagonal line. So I don't want to just put this on there and go, oh yeah, let's get 10 inches in there. No, no, no. Use your diagonal lines and make sure your 10 inch mark has plenty of room all the way around so that you can trim it. So there's that and my other one's pretty dang close. Whoops. And then we're going to flip it around and do the same thing. And in this case, now that you've already got your diagonal match, it should still match on this one, but you're going to want to match up your 10 inch to your bottom and your side. And you should be good to go. You're not exactly going to be matching seams and all sorts of things. And that batting is pretty thick, so you'll want a good sharp blade. Okay, so there's that 10 inch. I'm going to do the same with this one, lickety split.
Okay, now that we have that done, now we need to add darts because your bowl cozy, as you can see here, it needs to, it needs to roll up. You need to be able to have a curve in it and you gotta get a curve in it by putting darts in it. And you're going, darts? Oh my, darts? No biggie, this is not a problem, people. So let's do this one, or yellow. So here's the thing. For a 10 inch bowl, you want a dart that goes about two inches down and an inch on either side. There are several ways we can do this. One way is we get our handy dandy friction marker that is, will disappear when it gets warm. And we go into, you get your square, just a little bit down from the top so you can still see some fabric here. And we're gonna mark, you know what? Let's see if we can, oh, can't get any closer than that. So basically five inches. Five inches is your halfway mark. You've got a 10 inch square. If you're working with an eight inch square, obviously your halfway is four. 12 inch square, halfway is six. So do your math. <laughs> Get out your phone and do a calculator if you need to. 10 divided by two is five. So we're gonna mark five right there at the top. And now you want an inch on either side. So that means our four and our six. Okay, so now we've got that marked. Now. From your center one, you want to go down two inches. I go down two inches and I just put a dot. And then you want to make, draw your dart. So you match your two inch drop over to your one inch and you draw your line. and you draw your line. Okay, there we go. Now you've got your darts. And then, whoops, oops, sorry. I did it on the wrong side. Because basically what you want to do is you want to fold those in half. So my apologies, we would have needed to do that concept on the back. And the reason I always forget this is because I don't do it this way. So let's do this so I can show you how you would do it. There's my five inch. I go up there. I go up there. Okay, so now, <laughs> now if you do this method, then you've got your darts on the back and then you fold it. You fold it so you can see, you can see your lines. There's your dart that you drew. So now you can take that to the sewing machine and you stitch on that line. And then you cut, you know, about a quarter of an inch so you get rid of all this bulk. I don't do it that way. <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's what I do. I use a template. So get out a, I've already chopped this up. This is a old file folder. What's the chance I, yeah. So I started with this, a file folder. File folder, I cut off a chunk. Ah. This, basically what I did was, your file folders are generally about 11 inches. I trimmed it down to match my square. So now I have a 10 inch strip of template. And then, oh, make it about two and a half to three inches wide. And then you come in and basically you're gonna do almost, almost exactly what we did with your piece of fabric. In this case, in this case, I want to use a real marker or pen, which I had here a minute ago. There it is. Ah! Ah! You're going to find, you're going to want to find your, your five inch mark. And in this case, you're going to go over and three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch from the center, three quarters of an inch from the center. So I'm at my four and a quarter mark and my five and three quarters mark. That's where I've got it marked. And then I'm gonna kinda flip it over and I want five inches, but I want an inch and three quarters down. So I'm gonna line up. So this template, this template is 10 across. Here's my five and I've made sure, 
little bit more, a little bit more. I want to know this mark where it's an inch and three quarters. we we'll just put a dot there. And now we're going to draw our lines. So basically I'm making the dart on the piece of paper. The difference is this dart is a quarter inch smaller on both sides. Okay, now we need to cut out our dart. Use a piece of, use your paper cutters. Do not use your good scissors. My mother would be very upset. These are actually my mother's old scissors, which were her good scissors. They're still a dang good pair of scissors, but they're now my paper cutting. So we're gonna just cut into this dart. There. There, there we go. Now I have my template for my dart. And I'm just gonna mark this 10 inch template. So now I know, anytime I'm looking for it. So I will probably create a set of these, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch. 12 inch, you're gonna have to spread that file folder out the long way to get 12 inches from it, but that works. So then you take your, your um, fabric that you wanna put the dart in, and you put this on it and you mark it. So this is so slick because this way it's so much easier as you saw when I did the oops before is marking your fabric on the top of your fabric instead of trying to do it on the back. Okay, so one more cool thing that you can do. You can take that entire file folder, at least when it comes to an eight inch and a 10 inch template, cut it as a 10 inch square and create all your darts at once. And then you just put it on your square and you mark all of them at once. Whoops. And you don't have to keep moving your template. Either way works. The reason I like this method is I'm dealing with print, you know, marking the fabric on the fabric side and not, and not trying to do it on the back with batting. Then take your good pair of scissors, your shears. You could use it with a rotary cutter. I just find I'm more accurate with my scissors. And then cut out your darts. So in this way, we're cutting out our darts before we sew them. The other method is you're marking your darts, folding the fabric and sewing them before you trim off the excess. I just, I just find I prefer this method. Okay, one more. Okay, now we have our darts. Now, just like anything else you sew when you're sewing seams, right sides together, fold, fold your fabric so your darts match on both sides. Yep, there we go. So now, yes, I'm gonna pin it. Probably don't need to, but I'm going to because I have to walk over the machine and things could move but I'll rearrange them there. Anyway, so we've got our dart. So we're gonna then sew a quarter inch on both sides. And we don't have to trim because we've already cut our darts. We get those done, then those are gonna be sewed, and then you take it apart, and then you do the other two. So let's go do that. Okay, here we are back at the sewing machine to sew our darts. Now, these darts are actually seams. They are not quilting. Therefore, it's important for you to do a back stitch on it. And also, we're going to drop our stitch length back down to the traditional seam, which is, for my machine, a two and a half uh, millimeter, 2.5 millimeter stitch length. I have my quarter inch seam, so we're gonna just, we're gonna 
we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Now, as you fold these over, make sure to, to make sure your fabric doesn't bunch up a little bit in there. And for me, I like to start at the top. I have my machine set so that it will automatically do a back stitch. If your machine isn't so automated, you know how to do a back stitch. And so you want to make sure you do a back stitch when you start and when you end. other side. Okay. And as you can see, we have our dart. It's as simple as that. You flip it over now and you're going to do the other two. The other thing to note is that I have I am using a Microtech needle. I have found when I'm dealing with uh, the wrap and zap batting, it's rather heavy, along with two layers of that and two layers of fabric. And later when we get into quilting and actually doing um, edging, I've broken my share of needles. And so I've switched to a Microtech. It's a much heavier needle and I find that it works really well for bowl cozies. Okay, you don't need to watch me stitch the last two. I'm going to get that done and then I'll show you the next steps. Okay, now we have both sides done. As you can see, we got little bowls. Yeah, we got the darts in all of them. Okay, now the next step is you got to put them together. Okay, let's get rid of some of that stuff over there. Now, one of them, actually both of them, there we go. You want the right sides together. So you're gonna have one bowl where the inside is pretty and you can see it. And then the other bowl you want so you see the batting. So basically on the outsides you have the batting because what you wanna do is we're going to line up the darts and your corners everywhere. And then we're gonna do, oh, little more than a quarter inch seam. I find a little more than a quarter inch seam goes really well. Otherwise a good quarter inch seam around the edge works just fine. Double check that I haven't missed anything here. Um, yeah. So once again, I am going to and you know what you're thinking? Oh, wow, you know, how, how, how's that gonna work from a sewing perspective? It's not that big of a deal because as we get to a dart, we're going to pivot. So you're gonna sew and then you're gonna get here and then you just need to move the, lift up your foot, move the needle, not move the needle, shift the bowl a little so that you can pivot and then keep going. The other key thing is we need to leave a hole. <laughs> you don't want to stitch all the way around it and they go, how do we turn it inside out? Yeah, that'd be a problem. So I would suggest that you stitch up to just past one dart and then stop just before you get to a corner. Leave yourself about a half an inch before you get to the next corner. That is more than sufficient to flip this inside out. That way you're not trying to hand stitch and deal with, um, a dart seam or a corner after you flip it and get it out. So I am going to straighten this out a little here, do a little pinning, and then I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and show you how we're gonna sew this so that you can just pivot at those darts and you're gonna be just fine. Okay, we're back here at the sewing machine and let's see if I can find it. I've actually marked here. I've got a mark there and a mark there that indicates, whoops, there we go. <laughs> a mark there 
and a mark here that indicates where I want to stop. So this is where I'm going to start. Key thing here is you want to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around, stop, quarter of an inch, I mean not stop, but basically your quarter of an inch when you get to that intersection, that's when you want to turn to go down the next row. And you don't want to stitch and go all the way off the edge and stop because we're gonna trim the edges, which means we're gonna cut your seams. So you truly do wanna stitch, pivot, stitch, all the way around. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, once again, I've got my quarter inch, and this doesn't need to be exact of where I start here. Um, and I'm still working with a two and a half inch um, seam length. And I do my back stitch. This is another time you want your back stitch starting and ending. Because if you don't, when you start trying to pull this inside and out, you are going to start pulling those threads out. So you need it nice and secure. There we go. Whoops. I'm going to back up a, a stitch. I went one stitch length too far. So foot up, rotate it. Now I'm ready for the next side. There we go. And once I get to, <laughs> this is in the way, once I get to my dart, I try and either get my seams opposite directions, and this is why, or, or I try and open them up a little if that works. It's kind of difficult to do. This is also why I say uh, a good, strong needle helps, because now you're potentially, as you're going over this seam, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, yeah, you could have a lot of stuff there. So we're gonna go right up to that dart. And then as you see, it's like, oh, I'm at this angle now. Lift up your foot, angle it so you're straight again. That's what I'm talking about when I say pivoting. There we go. And we're gonna get to the next corner. And I slow down as I get to the next corner to wait until I hit that diagonal seam. And now I know, lift up and turn. Whoops, a little bit more there. So, and you know what? It's not that big a deal. So we're gonna just kind of turn it here. Do a little adjusting here and we're gonna get our seam. So there we go. This is what you're gonna do all the way around the outside, stopping so you've got about two or three inches of space to be able to flip it. And then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, it's all stitched up. Now, the next piece you're gonna wanna do is make sure you look at your seams on both sides. Because the first one I made, eh, I kinda missed. Because of how it lined up, it wasn't quite lined up. And so one of my seams didn't get fully in there. So. You just want to do a double check on both sides, making sure your fabric is all sewn in. You've got your stitches covering everything. Yep, everything looks good on my end. And you didn't forget to leave an opening. Okay, before we flip it, what you want to do is trim your corners. Let's try and do this here so you can see it. So, lop off a diagonal, your corner there. Okay, great. Key thing, don't cut your seam, that'd be bad. But I also do it one step first. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Caught my throat there. I do it one step further and I angle into that with a V. Just be very careful not to catch your seam. So I haven't lopped off just the corner. I've, I've made more of a V. So I've, I'm giving myself more room when I flip it that I don't have all that bulk. I'm much more apt to get a straight, um, get a nicer corner that way. Be careful. Don't do this too fast. Don't trim your fingers, because that'd be really, really, really bad. 
So this is why when you're working with this, you're going to want a really sharp <clears throat> rotary blade. And you can do this with a regular scissors too, if you would prefer. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to flip it. And yes, this is a small space, but what I like to do is just kind of go in, I get my, I get my fingers in and kind of reach all the way across to the other side and start pulling it through. And then you just slowly, slowly, and as long as you locked your seam stitches, you should be good with this, you just slowly tug, takes a little, Takes a little time here. Whoopsie, whoopsie. That was bad on my part. I left a pin in there. If you got pins, make sure you remove them. Ah, ouch, otherwise we're gonna have a problem. Okay, so as you can see, we're pulling this all out. And I should have grabbed another tool. I have a tool called a purple thing. Sit tight. I have this tool called a purple thing. I mean, seriously, that's what it's called, purple thing. It is awesome. It has a square kind of on one end and a point at the other. It's made of heavy plastic, but not too heavy. So it's not going to damage things and poke a hole through things. Because when you're trying to get your corners, you don't want something super sharp because otherwise you're gonna go right through your corner and you're not going to be very happy. So I just get this purple thing in there and poke out my corners. This is why I made my corners kind of trimmed them at an angle so that I could get them more pointy. Okay. There we go. Got a little corner here too. Get that one. Yep, okay, yep. Well, none of this is perfect, so my little stitching's not 100% perfect in my corners, but you know what? We're good. So then you're gonna just get it all nice and you're gonna take it to the iron and I think you know how to iron, so I don't need to show you. <laughs> you're going to take it to the iron and you're going to press things. Just press it down. Then, while you're at the iron, you're going to press this, these little seams. So, we're going to press those and then get some cotton thread that coordinates with your fabric so that it is not going to be very obvious and you're going to hand stitch that. And let me go. I'm going to go quick iron this and get some thread and we're going to see if we can do this and show you a little bit how I do my my hand stitching. Okay, I have had gone to the ironing. I had pressed my edges because you want to make sure that they're nice so you don't have them rolling over. So nice and nice and neat that way. And I have I am using Katona uh, 50 weight thread for mine. That's a good cotton thread. And I threaded a needle and thread with coordinating thread. I could have gone yellow, could have gone orange. So here, where's my seam? There's my seam. Now, this is a small enough seam. I probably don't need to do much, but sometimes I get out my little, my little clips to hold it there for me while I work through it. But I put a knot at the bottom of my thread. And for me, I work from the top down. If you're a lefty or you're different, some people work the other way. It all depends on what you're used to. But basically, I get that, I get that knot on the inside. I just pull it in there. And I am seriously not sure how this is going to even show up. Um, yeah. And then I just do a little, I just do it where I'm grabbing the 
inside of the fabric. Yeah, I'm not sure this is, this is probably not going to show up very well on the video. So it's a little, a little bit difficult to show that. And I'm going to get rid of these because they're a pain in the butt right now because they're in my way. But if you do this and do it, you can do it in such a way that basically your threads are hidden. So I am going to finish this because it's apparent that it's not going to be easy for me to show this where it's close enough on the video for you to actually see. As soon as I get this done, then we'll move on to the final step before you have your bowl cozy done. Okay, now I've got my little seam all stitched up, so we're all good to go. And you're thinking, yay, look, it's done. Not quite, because guess what? Oops, yep. <laughs> you're not really holding the pieces together. And believe me, if you're gonna use this for a microwave bowl cozy, a ice cream cozy, it's gonna get dirty. It's just that simple. And it's all cotton, including the batting, so you can throw it in the wash. And if you're gonna throw it in the wash, you need a little more stuff holding the pieces together. So what we're gonna do is now that we've got it all nice and neat, you're gonna go to the sewing machine and do two things. One, in this case, we already sewed lines to Xing, Xing the spots. You're going to want to probably just follow those same lines and create an X to do to hold your, your two pieces together. And if you're using matching thread that matches your fabric, you don't need to worry about being too precise. I've got blue, so I, I'm going to want to be kind of careful so that I don't have a complete, you know, it'll, it'll look funny. But you know what? It's fine. It's a bowl cozy. So we're going to stitch an X to hold our bowls together, our two pieces together. Then we're going to stitch about a quarter inch, maybe a tad more, around the edges to do a top stitch to hold all the pieces together too. And as you can imagine, with your seams in there, once again, <clears throat> we're talking some pretty significant bulk, which is why I recommend the Microtech needles, something a little heavier. And you're just going to want to go slow. Once again, just like you did with your seams, you're going to do your top stitch, you're going to hit your dart, and you're going to pivot to get the rest of it. So I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and kind of get it started so you can see you're thinking, this is curved. How is this going to work? It works just fine, no worries, and then we'll be able to call it done. Okay, here we are back at the sewing machine. Now that we're going to be doing some essentially quilting, we're going to want to increase that seam length again. So now I've bumped mine up from the 2.5 that I used to sew around the edges to a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. Now, because we normally with quilting, eventually you end up with all sorts of seams around it and it locks everything down. But in this case, that's not necessarily going to be the case. So I want to do a little back stitching, but to make it nice and clean, what I've done, if you can see here, is I've pulled up my bobbin thread. So I have nice tails for my bobbin threads. And we're going to see if this is going to behave this time. I've had mixed luck doing it, but I'm going to hang on to those a little bit. And I'm going to put my needle down and bring it back up and then Grab little scissors. And basically what we want to do, there we go, ah, there behaved, is get my bobbin thread pulled to the top before I start stitching. It'll make everything nice and cleaner. So then I'm going to put my needle down, my, my foot down. All right, so now I've still got it set so it's going to back stitch. And because it's got plenty of bulk there, we're going to want to be very careful and slow with it. There we go. And for me, yep, there we go. I'm going to walk very carefully on my line. And yes, this bowl is curved, but you're not going to have any problems with it. You're just going to kind of, as you do it, you're going to just kind of keep an eye on that. Make sure it's nice and smooth. 
And then as you kind of get into the middle, you're just gonna wrap these up along the side, which I know blocks the camera, but that's what you're gonna kind of do. And you're gonna get into the middle then, and then you're gonna come out the other side. Yep, it's really that simple. Fabric is bendable. Just go nice and slow. And then when I get to the end, I'm doing a back stitch. Flip it around. And in this case, <clears throat> trim those things off. I'm going to get my bobbin thread back to the top. So I have a nice tail and then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the other side. And then we will do the top stitch. Okay, so I have my other seams in, so now my two sides are sewn together. Now we're going to work on the top stitching around the edge. As I mentioned, about a quarter inch down. I like to actually go a little lower, so I try and get out of out of the seam. Otherwise, if you get too close to the edge, some people have talked about doing an eighth inch, you're going to break a needle. There is so many layers there, it's just you don't need to be that close. So I actually prefer to drop down a little bit lower, just almost just so I'm hitting the very bottom of that seam. So I don't have like, what, two, four, six, eight seams. Once again, I have my tails pulled up. I'm gonna go down just a tad. Take my needle, see if we can, see if this behaves for me to get my, my bobbin thread pulled up. There we go. Now I've got the bobbin thread pulled up to the top. Okay, and now I am ready to go. Um, and as you can tell, you know we've we've got a lot of we got a lot of stuff there. Oops, it's gonna do my back stitch. And just you know, kind of make sure your edges aren't rolling got probably a bigger top stitch right now than I probably would have preferred, but we're gonna go with it. Once again, you get to your, your, your um, <laughs> dart, lift your foot up and just pivot. Just pivot a tad. And then keep going. Cause yeah, this top stitch is, we got lots of layers here. And then as you get to your corner, up, pivot, and you're going to keep going. So that is really how simple it is. So I am going to go finish this and then stay tuned because I have some more uh, suggestions for you as far as quilting your uh, bowl cozy instead of just the basic X. So don't go away. Now that you have your bowl cozy all done and pretty, I'm going to show you a couple other techniques that you can use. This will also be a way to give you a way to try some quilting techniques that aren't complicated and you're not going to involve an entire quilt, which sometimes I know when I was starting to quilt, whether it was on my own domestic machine or my long arm, it was like, oh my gosh, I've invested so much time into this quilt. I'm so afraid to quilt it. This is very simple. Now you can practice on bowl cozies and then the whole family will each have a bowl cozy. <clears throat> okay, another piece of fabric. This time, uh, my friend Pat likes to do a grid pattern, a one and a half inch grid pattern. So I've got my black friction pen, which will, so make sure it's all ironed and nice and flat first before you do this, because you don't wanna have to iron it after you do your um, grid, because then they'll disappear. So. I start in the middle. So in this case, I'm starting with a 10 and a half inch piece of fabric. So that means my middle is actually five and a quarter. And I'm gonna draw my first line. And then from there, basically on either side of it, I do an inch and a half. Inch and a half, inch and a half. 
I just, you know, from the first line, I line it up with my inch and a half. You get it. It's not that complicated. And there's my other inch and a half. There we go. And then I'm going to flip it and do it the opposite direction. So basically, we are creating a grid pattern that you're going to quilt. And you can use your, I would suggest you use your walking foot, but if you don't have a walking foot, you're only dealing with your batting and one piece of fabric. So go and use your regular stitching foot. That will work just fine. All right, so now we've got them one way, and now we're gonna flip it. And now get that middle point, our five and a quarter, and you know what? Sometimes if you look at this and go, hmm, hmm, are they a little off on the edges? Don't worry, because you know what? <laughs> as long as you don't use thread like I am, where it's like blue thread on my yellow and orange, which everybody is obviously going, oh yeah, I see every single stitch, coordinating thread, nobody will see it. And besides that, you're gonna trim this up to a 10 inch square anyway, and you're gonna add seam allowances and everything else. So, you're fine. Oops, where's my 10, there's, there's my inch and a half. All right, we now have my grid. Okay, so there is you see that? Let's see if you can see that. There we go. I have basically created a grid with my Pilot friction pen, which is erasable. Basically, once I stitch on this and use the iron, voila, everything will disappear. So now we're going to get my batting and we're going to put this fabric on it. There we go. And you know what? Sometimes with this, I mentioned I don't like um, spray on adhesive and I do have this glue eh, I'll admit the glue's a little messier but guess what washable glue stick from crazy art sometimes I just put that around my edges a little bit if I want to give myself a little because I'm going to be quilting quite a bit I don't I don't want to really be dealing with pins so just use some of this whoopsie whoopsie this washable glue stick it's washable. Unlike spray adhesive, which I think, I don't know, I get that on my fingers and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sticking to everything. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna put my fabric back on there. There, here we go, look at there. Yep, make sure my batting goes around to my edges. Yep. It doesn't need to be perfect, because remember, this is a 10 and a half inch square and we're going to trim it essentially. So let's take this to the sewing machine and I'll show you a quick and easy way to do this. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine. My Because the last thing I did was my quilting and my top stitching, my stitching length is still set at three and a half. Personally, when I'm quilting, I like to start in the middle and then work out. So. We don't need to worry about back stitching because it's going to get cut off anyway. So I'm going to just start here a little bit down from the top because I know it's going to get cut anyway. So we're just going to basically, I'm just going to follow my lines, but I'm going to show you how easy this is and you don't have all these starts and stops. Get almost to the end, but not quite. Lift up your foot, rotate it. Remember, this stuff is gonna get cut off. And even if it's not completely cut off, it's gonna end up in a seam. So then I just go over to my next line and flip it and down. So 
So basically, I'm gonna just keep doing this, going across and down and up and get this side done. Then, yes, I have to cut my thread and then I'm gonna do the other side. Then I'm going to flip it and start in the middle on the other side and do the same thing until my entire grid is stitched. Does this take more time than the simple X? You bet it does. But I really love the way it looks. I think it's going to be, um, it's gonna hold things together more, especially as you wash the bowl more. And then when you have to do your final stitching of the bowl, when you're putting your two pieces together, you're not trying to max match your stitches on the X that you did when you originally quilted it. I'm going to finish this now. Okay, I have my quilting all done. Yep, I ironed it out, so now I have this nice little grid. Now, if you do this both on your top and your bottom fabric, then after you get your darts, because your darts should match up right here where this, this first quilting is, as long as you're squaring up right, and this would be your five, five inch mark, and then your darts. So then if you mar match those up, and then when you put your bowl together, you also match up your seams. Therefore, hopefully, <laughs> when you do your diagonal stitching, your both your top and your bottom bowl markings should match. I know, a little more complicated and a little more matching up of things. But you know what? I bet if you play with it a bit, you'll get really good at it. So I really love this one. It, it holds everything together a lot more, makes it more durable as you're throwing it in and out of the washing machine. The other option you have is, here we've got another piece, is to just do an all over quilting pattern. This is where I said, hey, you wanna practice some quilting and trying to learn to do it? Practice it on a 10 inch square of fabric that you're gonna use for your bowl cozy. And if you're not making from anybody else except yourself, ah, eh, it's good practice. So I put a little of my glue stick glue on it to cure that. But then I also, and you don't necessarily need these, but I have these little quilting gloves. Yep, they're little lightweight, lightweight gloves that have rubber stuff on the end. Therefore, when you put these on and you go to your sewing machine to quilt, you're gonna have better ability to move your fabric around. If you don't have them, don't worry, you don't need them. It'll work fine without it. It's just, uh, this helps make it a little easier. So let's go to the sewing machine and see how this can be done. Okay, we are back here at the sewing machine and I've got my trusty little gloves here. And if you've noticed, I've changed out my foot. This is a free motion quilt, <laughs> free motion quilting foot for my sewing machine. Also, on my sewing machine, I also had to switch out the plate. It has a special plate when you're doing free motion quilting and you're dropping the feed dogs. Key thing is, if you're doing this, you need to go to the manual on your sewing machine and make sure you understand all the settings necessary to do free motion quilting. I have buttons and settings to, deter to drop the feed dogs because basically free motion quilting, the sewing machine is not using the feet to move the fabric. I am going to move it myself, which is the whole point of the gloves. The other thing is you want the height of this foot when you lower it to not be too low. You don't want it pressing on the fabric so much that you can't move it around. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. So go to your sewing machine and figure out how to do it. And eh, probably want to practice on another piece too, or go ahead, practice on this. What the heck? Um, so in this case, I have, I do believe I have most of my settings. I am generally a long arm quilter. I don't do a lot of quilting on my domestic sewing machine unless I use my embroidery machine. If I use the embroidery, that would be very cool to do with this to make some cool designs on it. Key thing, I am used to using rayon for my embroidery. Nope, 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 no rayon, no polyester, God no, no metallic. Oops, sorry about that. And cotton. Get cotton thread, even if you're gonna use your embroidery machine for your quilting. So we're just gonna put that down. And then basically you're gonna just move this around as you want. It's a little tricky, which is why I suggested 
this might be a good way for you to practice. If you want to get the hang of free motion quilting, as you can see, this is why I don't do it on my own machine. This is kind of called stippling. And you just... <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at that. Did I say that? We'll, we'll learn a little more about this and we'll practice this in another video someday. But for now, it gives you a sense of what you could do if you really wanted to practice and use this for your bolt cozy. So there we go. We're going to leave it at that. <laughs> If I were to do this, this sewing machine converts to an embroidery machine and I would do use my embroidery machine to quilt it. Otherwise, I really like the, um, the grid method. Well, there you have it. I suppose you got a good laugh out of my attempt at free motion quilting. I will improve on that before I try and give you a class on that, but like I said, I usually use my long arm or my embroidery machine. I just prefer that for quilting. But I really love the grid concept of quilting. I mean, it's just, it's slick, it looks pretty, it holds all the pieces together, and it's easy. Either way you do it, whether you do the straightforward of just X's on your bowl cozy, turns out pretty cool, look at there, I got another one, so now Kevin and I don't need to fight over the other one we have. Do whatever you like, it works out just fine and enjoy it, use it in the microwave, use it to keep your fingers toasty when you've got your ice cream in there, or your fingers not so hot if you're trying to eat soup on the couch. We're kind of eat on the couch kind of people, so they could come in very handy, and this way we don't have to fight over it. Hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment below. And I just remembered one other thing that I wanted to mention. Oops. So I'm going to tell you right now. If you're not partial to the, the winged bowls and you want something a little, I don't know, a little prettier, maybe looking like a little flower, I personally think this works really great, especially if you're going to be putting them in the microwave because it gives you something to hang on to to get it in and out of the microwave very easily. But if you wanted something different, you could take your fabric and before you put your darts in, you could get a bowl and you could mark your corners. Just mark your corners here, each of them. Get the right size right size bowl to make your, your corners here. And then basically, you're gonna follow the exact same instructions as everything else, darts and all, except you're not gonna have to deal with corners. So you're gonna come in and you're going to take your rotary cutter or scissors and you're going to, and actually, <laughs> What I should have done is I should have trimmed this up to my 10 inches first. I didn't do that. I'm getting kind of out of, out of plan here. But basically I would have squared this up to my 10 inch square. And then I would have used the bowl to create my rounded corners on each of the pieces of fabric. And then you follow the exact same rules. And then you're going to get a bowl cozy that's a little more like a flower. It's going to have it's gonna have kind of curved. You're not gonna have these wings at the top. So if that's the way you prefer it, give that a try. It's a little bit different look. And I'll be posting both of those in my blog. I hope you found it helpful. Leave questions at the bottom if I can help you with anything. Take care and have a great day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video today. You can follow me by doing one, subscribing to this YouTube channel, hitting the bell icon on the subscribe button so you're notified every time I drop a new video. But you can also find me over on Facebook, Wendy J. Haney. So facebook.com slash Wendy J. Haney. Also, I have a Facebook group for people that love needlework, books, wine, all sorts of things also. The name of the group is called Life Fulfilled 
quilting, needlework, wine. Basically, you can't miss it. It's facebook.com slash group slash life fulfilled. You'll be able to find it. You can also find me over on my website, wendyjhaney.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate all your comments and feedback that you're providing me. Take care. Thank you.